So a few months ago I showed you guys Rooted, seemingly a Last of Us kind of survival clone, and it's making good progress. They look like they're adding some sort of kickstarting campaign in the future, and the typical nice shots of environment and stuff, with the character running through. Oh, we're going to have base building, it's going to be an online co-op game as well, and it does look pretty cool. It's going to be on the Unreal Engine 5. Since that video, they have revealed a bunch more stuff, and I've talked about it in a few of my list videos, but yeah, I thought I'd cover everything new about Rooted so far. So yeah, this was the updated trailer that they put out as well, showing some environments and some cool new features, particularly the drones. And this is definitely something that might set it apart. Otherwise, I've got to say, the rest of the gameplay does look pretty generic and stuff we've seen before. Running around a wilderness, a la scum or daisy, but maybe with just a little bit nicer graphics. That's all that really is the big difference. But things like having some drones in the game could really set out apart from others. And especially if they do really have this city setting, which is something a lot of the other games try to. Like Daisy's got plenty of big towns and Scum, I do believe, has got a few. But no one's really managed to crack that big open world survival city experience. Closest thing we've got is games like Dying Light, of course, but you know, it's still up in the air whether or not people really consider that a full blown survival game. It's certainly not a sandbox game. That's where we're at with my initial impressions. Rooted, it does look good, it's utilising Unreal Engine 5. There's no release date for it at all. I wouldn't imagine we'd see this before, maybe even the end of 2023, possibly even 2024, even in just early access. They're clearly at the very beginning stages. But they have been doing some posts and demonstrating some stuff that's been happening behind the scenes. Apparently they've got a closed alpha that's going to be incoming very soon. To sign up for that you'll simply have to fill in a form once it's made live. And the best way to get that is by being part of the Discord which I will leave in the comment section. Typical stuff, the alpha will be under NDA, the first one at least. Although we all know how that worked out for obviously Dead Matter. So this was something new though, they like I said do plan to have some sort of Kickstarter. Again, it probably won't be a good few months before this actually goes live. I'm sure they'll be trying to drum up a bit more support. 329 followers isn't exactly the biggest amount, but I do believe it's because it has only just gone live recently. So it's pretty much the pre-order page for the Kickstarter. Some big news though that demonstrates that seemingly people just still wanting these type of games even if we've got some of them games already out there doing well. 130,000 wish lists. That is massive. It's been four months and we've managed to gain that many. That is a lot of wish lists. Even if they only manage to sell maybe 7-10% to 10 of that which is normally the case, maybe even lower sometimes, that's a good amount to have at the very this stage anyway at least. 10,000 copies of your game can pretty much set you up for a good amount of time developing it, as long as your studio doesn't get too large. If you did miss about this game, so yes, it's set in a post-apocalyptic open world. Bacteriological weapons have decimated the population, meaning certain urban areas are inaccessible, with only the forest pretty much being untouched, and nature taking over and erased all traces of humanity so far. You'll develop your camp, improve your living conditions, you or alone with your friends, explore, find objects of the past civilization, restore them to use and or create new objects more advanced while avoiding dangers. Build and expand your camp, create bases and use the discoveries you make on expeditions to craft new items, allowing you to explore further and higher and reach hidden places. The whole map is yours but you won't be alone, you'll have to keep yourself safe and remember to rest. Recovery and repair are at the heart of our crafting system. So it does look like they've got a traditional sort of blueprint system. I say traditional but more and more games are using this but the best known example is something like The Forest. Grounded have done this pretty well recently too. Over time you gain access to new items, new areas, new crafts, but also new events that have a major impact on the world. So that's kind of the story so far. They shared just a few little seconds of another trailer recently, a cute few days ago, and it's just more environmental stuff going on. I've got to say these environments do look nice, the houses and the debris, cars and caravans nearby. It all looks pretty succinct and it makes you want to explore it. But again, it's not really nothing we haven't seen before. Whether or not we're talking about games like Myst, or maybe not to the same level, but something like Subsistence, there's plenty of these kind of survival games out there. So what is Rooted really going to offer that's different? Even guitars aren't really new since Scum have been promoting the fact they've got musical instruments in their game for a long time. If it sounds like I'm being a bit harsh, well yes, I do want these games to offer me something unique, or definitely do things a lot better. So it can look like other games out there, but can it deliver something more compelling? We've seen how terrible Dead Matter has really turned out to be, with some of the dev team actually moving on to make a new game called Vane, and reports of them being wasteful with the Kickstarter money they had. 
multiple delays, multiple issues, and basically the game just not being in any way close to a playable state. No one wants that to happen to any other promising games on the horizon. And of course, recently, the day before has now been delayed until March next year, if ever that game actually exists and will come out. The weather effects here look pretty good as well, i got to say, I like the look of this one, and it does definitely give me that kind of reminder. The polish from it, the fact that it's in Unreal Engine 5, does certainly make it a little bit more above than some of the other games we've seen, like I said, like Subsistence or Mist Mate. In this one we can clearly see as well, we've got a typical sort of food meat on the top, temperature, and I'm guessing that is some sort of elevation, as it's got like some mountains, or maybe it's meant to be your heart rate, I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's definitely not the heart rate. But you get the idea, I think it's trying to show where you are up low or high. And that does sound like it could be something interesting that they could be adding. Clearly the skyscrapers are in the game. The way it's worded that you will have to get access to new areas. And when you think of the word rooted as itself, well it's obviously from a tree or a plant that grows. So yeah, maybe it's a case of being able to unlock grappling hooks or certain types of ladder or machinery that will be able to get you up to certain places where these skyscrapers might have good loot or it might be part of the next part of the story. All that I'm totally down for. That stuff is new to me. That is the thing that I would definitely get behind. And that's where we're at. After showing off some trader work that was pretty much placeholders, then now I've got the locomotion system in it, the character model design and more. The base building's been shown off. It's looking like it's going in the right direction at least. You know, to school they do confirm what I just said as well. Don't expect to see this game anywhere close to releasing until at least the end of 2023. In their Q&A, they do stress that the world will have a fully fleshed large city with many resources, but also smaller hamlets and villages, as well as obviously the big forest. They do have the usual aspirations of bringing it to console at some point down the line, but they do say here that they will add PvP at some point down the line, but the first experience they're working on is solo and co-op. So one to keep an eye on, I will keep you up to date. Once we get a nice big collection of updates, I'll let you know how things are going or any new gameplay trailers. If that's whetted your appetite for some new games, then do go make sure you see my series I put out recently. you find it in my Survival Show playlist. All the brand new games that are coming in 2023, the 2022 Survival games that are still to release, and the big updates, ports and DLC, still hitting some of the biggest and best Survival games this year. Now sit right bags, I'll catch you later.